He is known as the toughest man in the world. Presenting Andrew the Brick Wall Sosa. What is up, my friends? How y'all doing? This is your boy Sosa Pones coming at you with the Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness movie review. There will be no spoilers in the first half of this video, this long-awaited video and film, by the way. There will be full spoilers given in the second half of this video. No spoilers in the first half. So if you don't want to spoil, listen to the first half, and then I will give you plenty of time to turn away. I absolutely promise. Before we get into the spoiler section, the last half will contain the spoilers once again. All right, so there's your warning. Before we go ahead and get started, please consider joining my memberships. I would really appreciate just your consideration. There's lots of cool perks on there for everyone, like, you know, group chats and early access to videos just like this one. You, if you had been on the top tier, you would have had access to this last night. So I would really appreciate it if you all would consider that. Please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on all so you can see all my future content as well. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yeah! Please keep in mind, too, if you don't want to support YouTube or do a membership deal, there's also Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. All the links for that will be in the description and first comment. You can contribute to me on there as well as leaving me a thanks. It's like, kind of like a super sticker, like a super chat, which will be next to the download and share button, too. But I understand if times are tough, you can't do all that, especially under the Creepy Joe inflation going on right now. So at least smash that thumbs up, like button, share this with everybody that you know, please. Leave a comment, support the message of YouTube algorithm with questions, thoughts, or just leave a smiley face algorithm comment. It all really helps out the channel. Get on with it! All right, non-spoiler time right here. I thought this movie was good, and I would even go to say very good. I wouldn't say great, though. Now, were the comics a little bit too harsh, at least in some ways? I do believe, just like with Morbius, there was definitely problems with Morbius, and the same kind of problems, too. Like, there was bad, uh, you know, editing because they, you know, wanted to save Spider-Man scenes, and I feel like they did some of that same stuff within this one. Not only with the editing out to be able to save for future films, but also the creative differences, you can kind of feel where the movie is a bit disjointed. And, you know, because Raimi originally wanted to make the movie rated R and he wanted to make a lot more darker scenes even within the PG-13. And this movie is plenty dark as it is. It takes that PG-13 up a level. Uh, but, you know, it, and still good for kids, trust me. But, yeah, you can kind of tell where things start to not really mesh as well within the movie. But they still do a good job putting it together. All right? It is a good It's very entertaining. All the actors do a good job. Chavez, you know, she's not really a spoiler or anything like that. She's not nearly as insufferable as I thought she might be. But you know, she actually does good, and they're, she's not too overpowered or anything like that. She's actually given the right amount of power, and, you know, she's basically like Gohan in the movie if, from Dragon Ball Z. You'll know what I mean if you, if you watch Dragon Ball Z at all. But uh, there were some good musical scores as well. They're rare, but still good musical scores. The graphics are all on point. Sometimes Marvel does really great graphics, and sometimes, even with their big budget, they seem to miss the mark and miss the ball. I don't know what their deal is with that. But that it just happens occasionally. But all the actors do a good job. It, a lot of people and the critics, and again, I feel they were a bit too harsh, but there is a problem with the pacing as well. The pacing, it, it's a little bit too fast. Not extremely too fast, like some people pointed out, you know, or thought. But if they had just maybe increased the speed by 5 to 10%, uh, or slowed it down, sorry, slowed it down by 5 to 10%, and just made the movie like 15 minutes longer with all the same scenes just with a with a 0 0.05 you know slow down it would have made all the scenes a little bit more impactful and it would have felt like it would have flowed just a little bit more naturally just 15 more minutes of content less than two hours or a doctor strange multiverse of madness just it, it didn't seem like it was enough and it we did jump around a lot and it had a hard time sometimes not all the time like some people said but sometimes it, it took a little bit to be able to you know time to be able to figure out what's going on you got to talk to your, your friends or like do you understand what just happened what just happened you know what did she say blah, blah. it can kind of lose you just a little bit but it's still pretty good in some other areas whenever it comes to the pacing it is definitely all over the place and just hits you with one thing after the other after the other but i like that i like that i didn't think it was a problem at all there was one critic on Rotten Tomatoes who said there's nothing mad about the multiverse of madness, as in there's nothing crazy. And that is sadly true. There's nothing really crazy about this. And even though I feel like it was a great movie, it is very formulaic. 
all right it is extremely abc formulaic it is a marvel movie and nothing more and i was hoping that they would really take the opportunity to branch out and go crazy with some of their character expansions and plots and theories and stuff like that they really didn't do that as much i was hoping they were again i enjoyed the movie it was good but i feel like there was so much squandered potential that's what i really feel like i just feel like it was good to quote wonder woman the second movie but it could be better you know that that's how i basically feel like it was it, and man they just had so it, it so many great scenes where you're just like wow this is awesome and the humor was on point too i know a lot of people think that you know marvel puts a little bit too much forced jokes in there i think again that criticism is usually too a little bit too harsh by the general fan base i like some of the jokes none of it seem forced and everything like that we have good character development and everything like i think people are going to genuinely enjoy this movie especially people that you know who are just general fans and don't know as much about comics as i do or you know even more you know like you know the comics explain historians and stuff like that they're going to definitely enjoy it more but it, it could have been better you know, I, I just was expecting so much more. I was expecting to be taken on these wild adventures and be surprised at every turn. And we got lots of cool scenes at every turn, but not a lot of surprises is the, the bad part. And we also uh, wanted to talk about the wokeness. Was it terribly woke? There's only one scene that is woke and it refers to the same, you know, kind of, you know, couples, female on female being uh, mothers, but it's very short. There's no other woke scenes or anything like that. It's basically a placating scene to the left. And I hate that they always put that agenda in there, but it they messed up in my opinion with this one. If you're going to go woke, go all the way with it. But they try to do this little happy thing and now they've been banned in China because of it. The scene that they put that in there is not easy to edit out of any film. And it's only one thing, but it's still kind of essential to the story. Uh, not extremely essential, but somewhat essential to the story. So they kind of mess their own selves over. Now, Sony, and if Disney is now starting to take a stand towards China, good. Because that means we'll get better products with less, you know, of that leftist BS nonsense in the movies. And I'm all for that. Because they, if they don't rely on China to make the big box office dollars then they have to rely on us and Spider-Man proved that they can make a lot of big money and still have billion dollar films but you know they need to bring us better quality content or else people are not going to want to go out to the movies anymore because they've been scared you know crapless over the last two years over the coof so you know uh it, it's not easy to edit out and now they're going to suffer the consequence for it. I think they tried to play this kind of middle game where they wanted to progress you know on both sides but they ended up getting cut off and now they're going to have to pay the consequences for it but I'm glad, you know, that it, it didn't really have any much of that other agenda within it. So props to them uh, for that and not messing that up. The fight scenes are also pretty excellent here. I'm big on choreography and making sure that the scenes actually make sense. And, you know, it actually all meshes really well together. I'm a professional Muay Thai fighter, so it's extremely important to me. Make sure you check out those videos. Link in the description. First comment after you're done watching this video. Two scenes in particular with extremely ridiculous and utter trash writing. But the rest of the show is still structured and written pretty darn well. Life is good, but it can be better about to get into the spoiler section of this video but if you don't want to be spoiled and you're about to click off please, before you leave please follow me on my social media platforms like facebook rumble rumble's the most important one but instagram twitter twitter just got bought by elon musk so praise be to all you know jesus allah and whoever you worship that is freaking awesome that free speech is going to finally return to the platform so i'm going to be trying to be post more on there so that, that's really good news but yeah do all that stuff you know do all that subbing liking bell and all commenting sharing all that good stuff joining my memberships considering doing that contributing to me you know via the thanks button the tip button or you know all the other you know cash app you know venmo paypal stuff that are in the description as well do all that stuff and check out the rest of my channel too if you're going to click off of it especially too there's lots of good stuff on here for everybody like ufc fight content political humor dbz anime fictional all sorts of good stuff on here and yeah we're about to get in the spoiler section so go ahead and turn away if you don't want to be spoiled in two one all right, here we go. Now let us begin! All right, let's go ahead and get started. Spoiler time. Wanda is the bad guy of this movie. Yes, 100%, and those who predicted that were 100% correct. And I'm actually kind of glad for it to have come full circle, because WandaVision, I felt, was kind of ruining her character by making this kind of half-villainy kind of person. 
and I really didn't like that. It felt like a cheap uh, agenda. And now that it's actually gone full circle, it actually goes to the story a little bit better, and she accepts her darker nature within this movie. And if you're going to make someone a bad guy, like I said with the whole China thing, do it the right way. Do it the whole way, and then we're all good. And that that's exactly what they do with this. But there is some redemption to be had later on, so we'll get we'll get to all that in just a little bit. The movie starts out in a different universe, or what might be like the parts of space in between universes with a Doctor Strange variant and America Chavez running away from a monster who is controlled by Wanda trying to capture Chavez's power for herself. In these in travels between the what would be called like the bleed in DC Universe, in between these spaces and dimensions and the other universes and stuff, we also do do get a glimpse of the Living Tribunal. A lot of people were, you know, like, oh my god, that's the Living Tribunal, it looks just like him. Well, we don't have anything about him in this movie. There's not a thing about him. We just see a small glimpse of him. I bet later on, as a prognostication, there is going to be a time where he has to come in and judge someone on the multiverse a little for messing with the cosmic scales. And they're going to be like, he's going to be like, I remember I saw you traveling across my face for a split second while you were, you know, causing all this chaos within the multiverse. That was you, I remember. And it's going to be a good callback to the Multiverse of Madness movie. I think that's what's going to happen. But once again... Doctor, Doctor Strange doesn't have anything to do with the Living Tribunal besides that one little scene where we get a quick glimpse of him. Sad, but I think the Living Tribunal is too much at this time, or maybe he could be introduced and re- referred to way later, but he is big guns. He's like the Holy Spirit for God. He's like the one above all. It's his right hand, basically. He, re- he does all the multiversal judgments. If you know anything about comics, you know about that. But most people who are even casual Marvel fans kind of know about him. Anyways, let's continue. Uh, they can't win or escape the monster, it seems. So the strange variant, the not our variant, not our Doctor Strange. I'm very specific on this. The strange variant starts to take the power away from Chavez for himself in order to be able to escape with it since she can't control it and he knows that this is going to kill her if she takes all the power it will kill her and he says that it's for the greater good in the cosmic scale of the multiverse your death and sacrifice will be an infinitesimal thing and but it will save so many lives he's using that logic again and he, because he doesn't want the monster to get a hold of it if this monster apparently is able to get a, a hold of it or that's what they think, because it's really Wanda controlling the monster. So this Doctor Strange variant knows what Wanda's doing. So she, he knows that she can't get control of this or else the multiverse will fall apart. So he is going to sacrifice her life. But he is killed by this monster uh, right before he can actually follow through with it. And we find out later that Chavez's power is the ability to travel through between different universe, universes in the multiverse. She can't control it. She basically just goes basically off instinct whenever she's in a bad situation. It just kind of happens. So it's not a very reliable power, but it's still an extremely powerful thing. And she can also kind of use this thing to be able to punch really hard. It's not explained. It's not shown properly. But she can basically use this kind of multiversal traveling ability to be able to, you know, use like the exits... They open up with big power, so maybe she just transfers that to her fist for like a split second or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But right before she's about to have her power taken by the monster and Doctor Strange is dead, like I said before, she is able to escape through this other universe. So she uh, she's basically Gohan from uh, you know Dragon Ball Z, and this comes into big play later. I will save that for when we get to it, but oh my god, Gohan is perfectly her, and it doesn't good, do good for the writing. Anyways, she escapes by the skin of her teeth with a dead Doctor Strange variant body along with her. So she takes that to our universe, which is revealed to be the same numbered universe of 616 from the comic lore. If you're a comic fan, you know 616 is our universe. Doctor Strange of our universe is at a wedding, whenever this is going down, of Christine's. She's getting married, in which she tells Strange that they didn't work out because he always has to be in control. 
And the line she used is say, you always have to be holding the knife. And he kind of accepts this. None of this uh, situation is, like, negative in any way. They're not fighting or anything. It's all done peacefully and happy. You know, it's, you know, basically they admit that they have feelings for one another, but it just wasn't going to be able to work. And it's mainly due to his fault, you know, him making all these sacrifices, not involving her and stuff. And he just has to be in control too much. And... It, it puts a kind of nail in the coffin onto why things are the way they are, and that's definitely good for the audience, and it's good kind of development for their relationship. It helps move the movie along in a good way and develop a plot point later for good character development. They're interrupted at this wedding by another monster who is basically Gargantos, or at least modeled off of Gargantos, the comic book character, who is basically just this giant one-eyed squid character. Everyone wanted it to be... Uh, Shumugorath. We were all hoping for that, and I definitely think they had a huge opportunity that they missed. They should have made him the main villain, or at least part of the main villain, him manipulating the actual main villain, because he is so multiversal and OP, it's not even scary. Like, Wanda would stand no chance. Like, he, just absolutely none. And Wanda is one of the most powerful beings in the universe, and he is, like, he controls other universes and multiverses. Like, he owns them. Like, that I would have loved to have been able to see that, but we all kind of already assumed, you know, based on what we were getting and the info and the leaks and commercials, that it was going to be Organtos. They never explicitly say the name in the movie, though, so I don't know if they did that intentionally or uh, trying to be ominous or anything, but I don't know, whatever. Anyways, after defeating the monster, Chavez uh, tells Doctor Strange and Wong her powers along with why the monsters are chasing her, so they decide to take her in and protect her. Strange goes to Wanda for help since they figure out that the magic they're facing is witchcraft rather than original or magic that they're used to. But Strange figures out after talking with Wanda a little bit that it's actually her who is manipulating all the events from the start and is actually the bad guy in this scenario. Didn't know that at first, he couldn't put that together. And she tells Strange to hand the girl over or else, uh, you know, she, he and anyone else who protects her is going to get it. And, of course, he does not. She reveals that she wants her to be able to take her power from her to go to another universe where the boys exist via her power. And when asked why she can't just use Chavez's power for herself to go to the Sunny Universe and be happy... She says that she she is fully aware that taking her power will kill her, but she thinks that it's a willing sacrifice that she's willing to make. She's willing to do it because she wants the power to be able to travel to any other universe in the multiverse because in an infinite amount of universes, there will be infinite solutions to any problem that uh, may afflict her or her boys, allowing them to basically be immortal and live together forever so it's a very selfish endeavor now admittedly she is being influenced by the dark hold it's a you know dark book you know with dark magic and you know it's making her a worse person than she actually is and we don't really get a good origin story on the dark hold and i really do feel that that's another missed opportunity if they had said it you know was powered by mephisto or made some sort of allusion to it or anything like that that would have been freaking awesome but they didn't. It could have been Nightmare. It could have been any one of those. But the, another missed opportunity, in my opinion. Like I said, fun movie, but I think it squandered so much potential, so much good stuff that they could have had. But whatever. Let, let, let's continue. Uh, Strange uh, befriends uh, Mordo whenever they escape uh, from Wanda. Because Wanda wrecks Ham on the whole Sanctum Sanctorum. Because they they're protecting her and she just obliviates everybody like uh, and it looks really cool. The fight scenes in the, in this one are awesome. So after Strange and everyone Wong Chavez get wrecked with the whole same term, they are able to barely escape once again with Chavez to a different universe. But Wong is captured by Wanda, and once they get to this other universe, they visit the Sanctorum. And a Mordo befriends Strange, because it's a different Mordo, you have to remember that, when they travel to this universe's Sanctum Sanctorum. But this was a false friendliness, we soon find out, because Mordo end up roofing both of their drinks, and he takes them before the Illuminati. And it's a really cool setup, we see all the technology that they have, they're so much more advanced than we are, they have the Ultron bots, you know, things have definitely gone down different, you know, they're one of the superior universes. The Illuminati is made up, and here's a lot of the big spoiler parts that a lot of people, you know, might have already seen spoilers on, but it's really, really cool. The Illuminati is made up of Captain Carter, 
basically the Britain, you know, uh, female Captain America. And she does great. I have no problems with her. Like, she is a great actress. She's hot. And I, I like it. Now, she does steal Captain America's line. I could do this all day. It kind of reminds me of that cringy, you know, Terminator thing. I'll be back, you know, what that was just a uh, c- completely, you know, SJW trash. But this one actually makes a little bit of sense and it does r- respect Captain America. So I'm pretty okay with it. So she's in there. It's cool. Black Bolt, uh, who, if you're unfamiliar with the comics, has super voice abilities in which a whisper can basically disintegrate any normal human. He has that ability. Black Bolt is part of it. Captain Marvel, who is not played by Brie Larson. She's played by the black girl who is in the Captain Marvel movie that we're all used to. She does Maria Rambeau. Well, she's actually Captain Marvel within this movie. (laughs) To answer the question that nearly everyone will be wondering or asking in the comments, yes, she is just as insufferable sounding as Brie Larson is who was recently introduced into the cast of the Fast and Furious franchise, and collectively almost the entire fan base of that universe of Fast and Furious almost in complete unison just went. I'm out of here. Mordo is, of course, part of the Illuminati as well. Professor X, played by Patrick Stewart, in which we already basically all knew about in the trailers that we've already seen for, you know, Doctor Strange 2 the Multiverse. And the biggest and best reveal, drum roll please, Reed Richards, played by John Krasinski. Now, everyone has been wanting him to play, and if anyone else had been chosen to play Reed Richards, they would have rioted. The entire fan base would have, and rightfully so. We all have been waiting so long for this. Like, he is perfect for this role. We actually don't get to see, you know, the girl version or the Fantastic Four or anything like that. We don't get to see any of that, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be, we all know who it's going to be as well. Good job for Marvel for pleasing the fans finally with that. But this victory is short-lived since Wanda attacks the Sanctorum that they're all at. And she kills all the Illuminati except for Mordo. Now the fight scenes, once again, are awesome. They all die glorious deaths. Or at least most of them. <laughs> Some are kind of embarrassing, honestly. But it's all really, really cool, is my point. And I really just don't like the way that they killed off these newly introduced characters that we were all looking forward to so much. They could have used them to their full potential. Like, it just really stinks. Like, you don't use your characters enough. Marvel has been criticized for this, that they don't use their backups enough. They just kill them off, and then you're not going to be able to do anything with them. Now, we do have the multiverse now... But, you know, so you can always bring somebody back, but it's just, it's not the same. It's not as good a writing as it could be. That's just my opinion, though. Some people, a lot of people did agree with me on that, but if you disagree, maybe Marvel has some sort of vast plan that I'm just not aware of. I just don't like that, how they handled this, and they made her basically cannon fodder for showing off Wanda's power. And I have no problem with Wanda being this powerful, because she can kick everyone's butts. Doctor Strange... You know, Wong at the same time, all the Illuminati, she takes them all on at the same time. That's all good, because I, even though it's with the help of the Darkhold, it's still generally her power. Uh, it, it, I have no problem with this. I liked her beating Thanos nearly in the Endgame thing. And she it debunks the, you know, the the crappy leftist narrative that we don't like strong female characters like, you know, Brie or Mary Sue Skywalker. Make sure you check out my video. That'll be linked in the description about that in the first comment as well. But we love strong women. I've loved her in all these scenes. I have no problem with that. I just don't like the way that they have handled all this. So, by the way, Mordo should have been killed off too. Like, he is such a giant D-word. Gotta watch out for the YouTube censors and algorithm. Y'all know the deal. He left that man paralyzed in the first Strange Movies post credit scene after taking his magic abilities when he wasn't hurting anyone or influencing anything. I still feel so sorry for that guy, and F Mordo for that. So wrong. Just so wrong. Anyways, Mordo tried to end Strange since he believes basically all Strange variants are too susceptible to corruption. Many of the Illuminati also believe this to be true since they prevent other universal incursions throughout the multiverse and so that everyone can basically survive. And Strange uh, almost always seems to be bad as a universal 
you know, constant within the multiverse. Now, they make it very clear that they are some of them are willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and some others aren't, but it's not a universal constant, it's just close. Most of the Doctor Stranges seem to be more trouble than they're worth. Now, not a lot of them are really evil as much or as more as they're just selfish and, you know, just end up doing things that lead inevitably to certain deaths and they're just not willing to put up with it they say that wanda is not as big of a problem they don't fear him nearly as much as the other strange variants so that's some pretty interesting stuff right there they then tell the story of how their universe's strange variant needlessly killed one billion people while trying to stop thanos so they killed him with the willingness of strange uh that strange variant himself indicating that he basically took responsibility for the result of his misled actions and kind of saw the error of his ways in the end so Strange escapes again after a fight with Mordo with Chavez and plus that universe is Christine. Yeah, he actually Christine is one of the super smart scientists who assists in the Illuminati and all their missions. So Strange really grows as a character when he realizes his issues with Christine. They talk a lot and work a lot of the stuff out, you know, what their problems were and basically they're all, all the Christines are the same person in any universe and also they all have relationship struggles of the same nature within all the other universes as well seems to be a constant and then we cut way back to wanda who's controlling different wandas in different universes wherever basically strange and chavez go in order to be able to you know chase chavez to get that you know uh, po her power and she's using the dark hole to be able to do that and it's corrupting her even more and more also she's keeping wong close by in chains so, like I said before, I'm not going to reveal every single little bit of detail. I'm going to keep some, you know, some of the details for y'all. I'm going to just uh, go to what I think is important. So, Wong basically gives up information to her because apparently she can torture dead bodies that they've had their souls taken out from. And she does this strange ability to the dead magic students of the sanct sanctum that she killed. Which is pretty stupid since he knows it probably isn't real since they're dead. So what does it really matter? She's probably just manipulating him and it's not real. But he's such a bleeding heart that, you know, he just couldn't take the sounds of those, you know, painful cries, I guess. And it's like not a good Sorcerer Supreme to me. I don't like what they really, how they really handled his character all that much. And, but whatever. Uh, she uses this info to finally capture Chavez and this leads to Strange... Try, uh, trying to find his other variant in the multi in the universe that they were in at the time whenever Wanda successfully captured Chavez and he's still with Christine but uh, of course this other strange once they find him they discover that he isn't a nice guy uh, he's been stuck in his withering reality that he basically destroyed too so he tries to kill strange and take Christine for himself but of course our 616 Doctor Strange wins the fight he takes the power of the dark hold of that universe that strange that the strange variant was holding at his sanctorum and he knows it's dangerous and christine's like you shouldn't be doing this and he's like i know but i don't feel like i have another choice so he uses the power of that uh dark hold book to control the dead body that we alluded uh, alluded to earlier uh in uh the 616 universe that you know chavez had purposely or maybe accidentally brought with her he takes over that dead body, which is a huge sin amongst the cosmos, and dead souls are trying to fight him and take and take the body back, and you know he's having to fight them off at the same time, and he needs Christine's help in order to be able to like in, in order to be able to fight off these souls, not only in that universe with the body that's you know, they're trying to recover, but also in the current universe they're trying to take over him too, and with her help, she he finally gets a hold of his senses. And is able to manipulate them to be able to fight on his side. He's able to use them to fly really easily. And they also be able to attack anyone that he basically wants to. And he does this with Wanda. He finally is able to confront Wanda. And he uh, attacks her with these souls and his own power, of course. So, but, of course, that this isn't enough. Even with the power of the Darkhold, you know, um, Wanda has the power of the Darkhold as well. Even with Christine helping and, you know, in giving him good ideas and stuff, it's still really not enough to be able to defeat Wanda. So, in a terrible, terrible stroke of <laughs> bad writing, like, <laughs> Doctor Strange ends up giving a pep talk while he's beaten on the ground to Chavez. 
and all of a sudden she starts kicking Wanda's butt. If you can, you know what I mean. She it she gets full control of her power that she never had before from this pep talk and is able to start kicking her butt. But of course, this power is not enough in the end. So Chavez, it, realizing she can't win still, even though she's doing a lot better than she did before, takes Wanda to a universe that she wanted, the universe that she wanted to take over that Wanda. She wanted to kill that Wanda and take her over, basically, so that she can be with her or with her boys. And whenever uh, Wanda, the real Wanda of that universe, of course, tries to defend herself and her boys, Wanda kicks her butt, the, the bad Wanda kicks her butt, and that scares off the boys, and they don't want nothing to do with her, naturally. And then when she sees her boys crying, scared of her, she, in another stroke of horrendous writing and just plot-induced stupidity, all of a sudden sees the error of her ways, realizes what she's done, and goes back to the original 616 universe to commit suicide while destroying the dark old power within herself. Ugh, it's Eternal's end scene level of bad writing where the guy basically commits suicide by flying himself in the sun it's so stupid but then all they all live happily ever after and everything's all good right until the very end scene and it is a great cliffhanger i will give him that the very end scene before the credits roll is our doctor strange receiving his third eye as a result of using the dark old power he didn't want this because this seems to be kind of an inherently evil trait something that the other Doctor Strange variant had too, it seems to have got at least gotten some measure of control over Doctor Strange now. He would tried very hard and knew the risks whenever he did this, and it seemed like he had a hold of it, but now it has at least partially taken over. I don't know. It was probably a foolish thing to do, but he felt like he had no choice, so I get it. And then the movie ends. Great cliffhanger, like I said before. Then we get the mid credit scene where our same Doctor Strange, with that third eye, at least a good amount in the future. He's apparently embraced this third eye. I don't know if that makes him evil now, or at least somewhat nefarious. I, I'm not sure. But Clea makes her first appearance into the verse by basically just kind of teleporting in. Clea, by the way, mo most people, are, I bet, are not going to know this. And if you know comic lore, you do know her. But she is Doctor Strange's future wife and the niece of Dormammu. Needless to say, she is very powerful, very OP. Quite oftentimes more powerful than Doctor Strange himself, but maybe a little bit harder time controlling herself and maybe have a few more weaknesses. But she can be pretty darn, like, OP at times, like I said before. And that's enough to make a lot of comic fans very excited. There's not a lot of writing on her, but what I, there is, man, it's some dank stuff. She opens a portal into Dormammu's dark dimension as she beckons Doctor Strange to follow her in, kind of mocking him in a playful way as if to indicate that they're married, you know, and, you know, just kind of flirting with each other. They, We don't know what they're going in there for or who they're going to fight, but she's like, are you scared? He's like, absolutely no way. It's like they're going to go and fight Dormammu or something. I don't know if that's what it is. May, him, Her being the niece, we'll see if that's a constant you know, that they stick with within the comics. I don't know. But that's a pretty good uh, post-credit cliffhanger as well. Going into the Dark Dimension, you know, have no idea what it's for. And introducing this new character, played by Shalise Theron. Yeah, Shalise Theron uh, plays her. She's an absolute trash person in real life, but... You know, she's a great actress, and I'll give her that, and she seems to be very well cast for this one. So, great mid credit scene, once again. <laughs> but I repeat myself. The last post credit scene is for humor purposes pretty much only with a man who apparently has a bit of comic lore behind him, but I'm not enough of an expert to be able to really delve into that too much. Uh, but he does have some sort of significance, I think, within real life and in comics. Uh, but he was basically a jerk to Doctor Strange in the movie before. So Strange has him put under a spell where he basically slaps himself for like three days straight or something like that. Uh, it's somewhere along that amount of time, three something. And when the spell ends, he says, it's finally over. Comedically alluding to the movie being over and the spell being over at the same time and everyone feeling relieved. And it's very comedic, it's very funny, and everyone's going to have a really great laugh at the end as everyone did in my theater.
And yeah, that's basically it for the spoiler section. Like I said before, let me know if you have any questions. I can't wait to see what y'all's feedback is. And if you already saw the movie, please come back to these comments and let me know what you thought about it. Even if you agree, disagree, we can have a nice, calm, reasonable discussion about it. Maybe you can help me realize something that I didn't see before. Like I said before a million times already. Like, share, comment, sub consider joining memberships you know uh follow me on all my social medias there should be some tasks popping up on the screen right now that have a content that i think you all will enjoy but if none of those took your fancy check out the rest of my channel it's definitely worth your time a little bit of everything on here for everybody and that's basically it thank you for listening to me rant this entire time y'all are awesome peace out my friends y'all have a wonderful rest of the day Let's go, Brandon. Oh,